The final options belonging to the control group for the client proofing gallery setup relate to the labels here in the contact form. So by default, we have name, email, telephone, website, and comments. It's important to keep in mind that the name, email, and telephone fields are required fields that cannot be submitted empty. Meanwhile, the website and comments fields are completely optional and can be submitted empty. If the client tries to submit the form without filling in those first three fields, they instead receive this warning, can't be empty, and will not be able to submit the form until they fill information into those fields. So if we don't want to use the telephone or website fields, we can disable those by disabling these checkboxes. The name and email fields are required in order for the form to work, so they cannot be disabled, nor can they be repurposed. They should be the name and email address of the person submitting the form. The comments, like we said, can be submitted empty if necessary. So let's turn these back on. The labels themselves can actually be realigned. They can be left, right, or center, depending on your preference. I'm going to leave mine set to the left. You can also change the titles, or if you want to translate them into another language, you can do that by using the text entry fields here in the control pane. Um, so you've got name, email, telephone, website, comments. You can also translate the send button text here. And then you can also translate the warnings, and there are two different warnings. One is the can't be empty warning that we get when we try to submit this with these empty fields. And the other is a warning that we can't actually test in Lightroom because we can't enter anything into these fields. But it's an invalid email warning so that if the information they put into the email field is not actually formatted as an email address, um, then they're going to receive a message warning them that it must be a valid email address. So you can change that warning here. And that about wraps it up for the form. So what we're going to do in the next video is actually take a look at a live selection gallery or live client proofing gallery so that you can see how to bring the information you receive from that gallery back into Lightroom in a useful way.